There we go. All right, so the screen that you're looking at right here is our old transaction desk screen that says transaction desk light. Um, around December of this year, this is going to go away. Um, we don't have an official date for this going away, but um, they are saying around December. So transaction desk light and transaction desk pro are going to be going away. Um, so you will no longer see these two, um, two options. We will be going to the new version of transaction desk. Um, the reason that they're getting rid of um, Light and Pro is because they are not mobile friendly uh, and they were having trouble making them mobile friendly so they're going to a whole new product um, that's more mobile friendly you can use it on your cell phone, your tablet, etc. So to get into the new version of Transaction Desk up at the top you'll see a button right here that says new version of Transaction Desk if you just click on that it's a lot of times going to take you through a pre-flight system check uh, if you logged into the system previously in a day it will not take you through the pre-flight system check again I have previously logged in so it's not taking you through it um, but what it'll do is it'll check to make sure you don't have a pop-up blocker on your computer still um, if you're using a tablet or a cell phone uh, or a mobile phone to access it it's not going to check for that pop-up blocker because it doesn't need to use that um, but it'll check for different different items that it needs to use. So we're going to go through a couple different parts of the system. The first important thing that I want to point out is the menu on the side. Um, anyone familiar with these icons? Everybody know what these mean? By looking at them? So if you've clicked on them, you might be familiar with them. Uh, but until you're, until you're familiar with them, you can either hover over them and it's going to give you what's called a tooltip to tell you what each of these items mean. Um, but the easiest way to determine what each of these items are referring to is to click on the three slash marks on the left hand side of the screen and it's going to expand out the menu. And you'll see that the first item here is the dashboard, that's what we're looking at here. Um, there's a broker dashboard and an agent dashboard. We're going to go through both of those items in just a bit. The one that we're looking at over here is a broker dashboard. Um, so if you're a broker or an admin, you'll have access to the broker dashboard and an agent dashboard. Um, and if you're an agent, you'll just have access to the agent version. Um, transaction desk is going to be where it holds all your transactions. Authentisign. Um, internet form. So this is our form storage area. Um, doc box for where we store our documents. Uh, our task manager, we'll go over that just a little bit. Broker tool. Internet fax. Um, this is a program where we can fax to email. Um, our contacts. Um, some setup functions. This is the button where we can switch back to Pro. So if you are exploring this system and you get caught on a section you can't figure out how to get past the next step and you're in a hurry you can switch back to the old system and continue in the old system until you can figure it out. Um, so you can switch back to the old system until like I said around December. Um, and then there's a log out button down at the bottom. So this is our toolbar over on our left hand side. So I can minimize this a little. And this screen is responsive, so if you're on a tablet, um, the screen is going to respond to the size of your screen. So uh, it's going to be skinnier on a tablet than it is on my computer screen here, and I can minimize it more if I'd like as well. Um, I'm just going to point out, let's see here. In the bottom corner right here, on all of the screens, I'm going to have a little blue dot, and if I click on that dot, um, no matter what screen I'm in, in Transaction Desk, I can always click on that dot to create a transaction, provide feedback, or view help videos. So there's help videos. Um, I think yesterday I attended a webinar, and I think he said that there's 120 videos in the system, on the new system. Um, on how to use different functions in here. So um, feel free to watch watch those videos and um, take advantage to uh, take advantage of them. 
Okay, dashboard. So the dashboard is fully customizable. You can put whatever you'd like on the dashboard. Um, I have customized my broker dashboard. I haven't done much with the agent dashboard. Um, but the stoplight icon up here, um, I'm not sure the exact term for what, what that icon is called, but it looks like a stoplight to me. So um, if you click on that stoplight icon, you have two different options that are here. Show widgets, um, and that's going to allow you to pick different widgets under here, so different boxes to add to the screen. And then we also have you as agent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to agent and show you what that looks like. So this is the agent dashboard. So if you're a broker that also carries transactions, um, you can always switch back to the agent dashboard. And same if you're an admin that also carries transactions, you can switch to agent dashboard and just view your transactions. Okay? So that's that agent dashboard. And then if I click the show widgets option under here, it's going to give me the rest of the options that I have for things that I can display on this screen. So um, these are all the items that I can drag over. Anything that's showing in white is something that's already displaying on the screen. Anything that is showing in either blue or green or a couple other colors that are back there is something that I can drag and drop on the screen. So I'm just going to drag and drop it. And it's going to place it on the screen where I want that widget to be. Okay? There are a limit to some of the, the widgets, so um, you can only add so many blue widgets and so many green widgets to the screen. Um, when you're done adding the widgets, you do have to lock the screen, so you're going to click the lock, and that's going to lock the screen with as many widgets as you have as you want on there, and the location of those widgets will be locked as well. Um, if you ever want to remove widgets, you're going to unlock it, and you can either remove them, or you can move them around, or again, you can go up to that stoplight icon and you can show widgets and add them to the screen. Same thing with the broker dashboard. If I go back to view as broker, I need to, for this one again, unlock it. Go to show widgets. And then I can drag that widget onto the screen. I have hit my max for the broker dashboard, um, so I can't drag any more over, so I'd have to remove one before I add them. Um, there's different things that are here for brokers than there are for agents. Um, for brokers and admins, you can impersonate agents. So for those of you that haven't used that in the other system, you can go um, into that agent account um, as if you were that individual. So if that individual gives you a call and says, can you pull this form for me? Or can you um, pull up this transaction for me and um, print the form? You can pull up that particular transaction as an individual. So you could click on that individual's name, and it's going to ask if you want to impersonate that agent. and it's going to bring you into that individual's dashboard. And when you're done, you can switch back by just clicking on this little red line at the top, and it'll switch you back to yourself. OK, any questions about the dashboard? Okay, That's probably the biggest difference uh, in the system. We didn't have anything like the dashboard in the, in the previous system. All right. Mind is blown. Anyone? Can I ask you a question? What's the difference between the email and the fax? The email and the fax? Yeah. Um, email would be straight email. So it would be somebody sends you an email and you get an email. Um, fax email would be um, someone sends a fax. So they have a cover sheet, they send a fax, and it's converted to an email. So basically what happens is the instant gets that fax 
and they have a system where um, they they have some sort of key up system where it creates an email of that once they receive it. So when you get it, um, you'll get a copy of it in your personal email, but you'll also get a copy in the document that you put your hand So if you have to send it out, you can send it out to the so if you're just using a straight fax right here, um, so internet fax, this will, and you fill out all this information out here, and print it, you'll be printing a cover sheet, and then you'll give that cover sheet to the individual that wants to use it. They'll take that cover sheet, and they'll put it with all the paperwork that they want to send back, and they'll fax that paperwork. And then when you receive it back, it'll be an email format. Okay? Any other questions? Any other questions about fax? I'm really not going to go over that too much. I think we're not using fax machines as much. Yeah, I have one yesterday. Yeah, they're being a, they're being phased out a little bit, but we we do still receive quite a few faxes, I guess, here, but uh -huh. In emails, there's no record of sent emails, though, right? Record of sent emails in the system? Yeah. So if I send one, I can't go to email and find my email. If you send an email out of internet, there are, yes. Uh, if you send it out as a transaction, under the history tab in the transaction, it keeps track of everything. So, yeah, it'll keep, it will keep track of everything. Yeah, that history tab in the transaction is really great. Um, I actually went and cleaned up everything in my uh, in my internet yesterday, so I really don't have any history of anything in here. But otherwise, I would show you. Um, all right. So um, the next thing that we're going to look at is I'm going to show you a transaction that I created yesterday, um, and then. After that, I'm going to take you through how to create a new transaction. So first, I'm going to show you an existing transaction and just some things that, um, some new things that we have with that, and then we're going to go through creating a new transaction. And I will show you the history tab um, in this. I don't know what that we are going to have much of, much of a history on here. Okay. So this is just a transaction that I created yesterday. Um, there is a transaction wizard in here that's similar to the one that you had in Pro um, in the old system. So it'll be, again, similar to Pro in the old system. Uh, so we'll go through that a little bit later, but I'm just going to show you an already created transaction and what that looks like. Okay. So each transaction is going to have a dashboard once it's created. So again, this is already created transaction. Uh, so your transaction name is going to be at the top. Um, there is a spot for a transaction picture at the top now as well. Um, so if you want to add a picture to the top of the transaction, um, you certainly can. Uh, this is a picture of Crichton because I just pulled golf pictures yesterday, so it's not a house. Of any kind. Um, we have a start a new forms button in here, so we have a couple of quick, um, quick buttons in here for different things that we can do. I can start a new assent assign, I can upload a document, I can email a document, I can <clears throat> go to documents, I can go to the call log. Um, this is something new that we didn't have in at least the light system. Um, I have my details in my transaction. I can go to details and look at that. Um, I have my forms. I can fax documents right here, so I still have that option in the system. I have my contacts. Um, there's checklists that we're going to go over a little bit. That is part of our, um, our wizard in the system. I have documents. And then I have another box for checklists as well. Okay. So um, on our left-hand side, I showed you our menu for the whole system. Uh, 
Similarly, on the right-hand side, we were going to have our menu or our transaction. So I have my dashboard for my transaction, which is the thing that we're looking at right now. I have property details, contact forms, documents, checklists, tasks, signings, history. Um, this is where I'll find my email history, my fax history, etc. Um, service orders. So service orders would be if I have a service order for an appraisal on the property, if I have a service order for an inspection on the property, those would be more advanced options that I can add to um, add to the system. And then I also have an option to add a call log, and that's basically just logging calls that I have on this particular property in, in the system. So this, again, is an existing transaction that I have in the system, um, and this is the dashboard for this particular transaction. Okay, so this is an overview of it. Any questions just looking at this? Okay. All right, so I'm going to take you through a new transaction. Um, there's several different ways to start a new transaction. The easiest way, um, like I said, we have this blue button down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It's a little hard to see because my screen cuts it off, but I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to say Create Transaction. And I've actually created some templates in the system. Um, there's a couple of different names that I've changed for items in the new system. Um, this has kind of been a name that's been going back and forth between the two systems, but documents are now called, um, the document storage system is now called Docbox all the time in the new system. So wherever we see documents, that's what we're using Docbox. So that kind of goes back and forth in the old system. Now, when I'm thinking about it, it kind of goes back and forth in the new system as well. So, whenever you see the word document, just refer to Dropbox, etc. Okay, so let's go back and forth. Quick start groups and transaction templates, those are the two um, storage receptacles we had before. Um, transaction templates, we also stored um, contacts, common contacts, and uh, documents. And so those are now under this one thing, and those are templates in the system. And you can create those yourself, or your office can create those. Uh, and I will go through at the end of the class today how to create those in the system. You do want to have a conversation with your office to make sure that you're not creating them, and then your office is creating them at the same time, because then you get to look at everything in the system and kind of end up being in that. So, you want to make sure if your office is creating them, that you're not always creating them in the system. Alright. Okay, so just like we had in the other system, I can import data from the MLS as well as from our realist tax system. So what I'm going to do is hop over to MLS for just a second and I'm going to grab a listing number. I'm going to be very scientific about it, and I'm going to grab the second listing I'm looking at here. Okay, so I'm going to do a test. Okay, so I'm going to do a listing. Um, for us to look at. So I just named it Test Listing New Transaction Desk. When you're naming your transactions, um, I would name everything the same. So kind of come up with a rule when you're naming things. Um, if you have paper files in your office still, um, keep the name consistent with those paper files. So if you name it with the last name or the address or something to that effect, keep it in line with that. Um, template, like I said, those are the same as those quick start groups or transaction templates in the old system, and those actually came over from the old system. Um, we had a little bit of an interesting time because we had our forms changed on August 1st. Um, so some of those forms had to be changed in the new system as well. So if you, um, if you get an error message in the new system, give me a call and we can walk through 
um, how to make those changes in the new system um, if when we go through it today, if you're not understanding how to make those changes still. So I'm going to pick the single family residential listing packet. And then I'm going to pick North Star listing data. And I'm going to keep it as residential. By residential in the system, they're meaning just single family. There is an option in here for multifamily as well. And then I'm going to paste the MLS number. And the only two, the only two things that are required on this page are the name and add me as the, I'm going to say list agents on this. So these, the top and the bottom fields are required. Everything else is optional. Um, I am going to use the wizard. Um, if you don't use the wizard, you are going to get the dashboard just like we have right here. And you can, um, in the background here, and you can pick and choose from the different steps. So if that's easier for you to follow, you can certainly do that. And you can go back and forth between the wizard and the dashboard when you're working with your transaction as well. When you're pulling information from the MLS, it does take a little bit longer, um, same with real estate tax. Okay. So on the side right here, just like we had before, we still have um, we still have the menu items for our transaction. And we have a transaction status right here. Um, so you do have an option over here to change your transaction status. So um, once a property is closed, you can mark it as closed and then you can filter um, your transactions that you're viewing by status so that you are only viewing active transactions uh, so that you, you don't have to sift through a list of all of your transactions when you're looking at them. Okay, just a couple things on this page. Um, again, if you've taken my class before, I do mention this, I think, in every class, but um, the first five digits of the property ID number are actually county called that it puts in front of there. So if you want to remove that, you certainly can. Um, so the first five digits are actually not the not part of the property ID, it's a county code. So I'm just going to take those out of there. And then do just make sure you're double checking this information. Um, if you were using the light system before, this is a little bit different because dates are actually in step number two instead of part of step number one like they were before. So. Um, when you're going through, you will have to click the next button to go to step number two um, to get to your next step. Um, we don't have to save. It's going to auto-save for us. So by clicking the next button, it's going to save our first step, and we're going to move on to the next step. And then you would add any applicable dates in here that you have. And I can click next. Um, you saw on the bottom right here, on, on the bottom of each step, there's going to be a save and exit button. So if you do have to exit, um, or if you're taking a phone call, um, you do want to click that save and exit button. Or at least click over to the next step, and that will, um, that will make sure to save your information. So what I'm going to do on this step, since I'm showing you a listing, is I'm, I'm going to actually take um, these contacts that are all in here out. And I'm going to show you how to add contacts. So there's an add contact button up at the top. So all I have to do to add contacts is click the plus sign. I have three different options here. Um, a new option that I have is to add from Google. So if you use Gmail um, as your email, you can add from your Google contacts, or if you just have Google contacts, you can add from them. Um, or you can add from an existing contact in the internet system, or you can create a new contact. So three different options under here. So for the first one, I'm going to create a new transaction contact. And 
This is a little bit different than before. I do have three different tabs that I need to click through. So I have a general tab. I have preferred. This is going to be for a trust or an estate. I have preferred name, preferred signature, initials that I can fill out. And I have address information on my third step over. So I'm going to fill out all applicable information. It is going to check the box for me automatically to add to my address list. So you can't forget. Okay? So that's fantastic. Um, I always forget that step because it's way down at the bottom. So um, the first step that you're going to do is you're going to pick your contact type. So you can pick from any of these types in here. And then you're going to click through and fill out the information and then save right here. Um, I'm actually, in the interest of time, going to go through and I'm going to add existing contacts. And you can only add one contact to, at a time, unfortunately, but... <coughs> If you have anything to change, as you're clicking on them, you can change it before you save it. Okay, so now that I have them added, I'm going to click the next button. And it's going to take me to my forms page. So these templates right here that I was talking about earlier, if I do a template, it's going to save me a ton of time because these forms will already be here. Okay? So if I don't pick a template, this page is going to be blank for me. Okay? So then I'll have to go through and I'll have to add my forms. It doesn't take forever. Um, but it does, it does take a little bit more time. So um, if you are missing any forms or if you don't have a template, um, your next step will be to click the Add button. And you're going to add your forms. So I'm going to go into my North Star MLS form because I did forget my listing input form. Let's scroll down just a little bit more. And this is a little bit different than our other system. I can just check the box here, or check the circle here. So I don't have to worry about holding a control key down on my keyboard or anything like that. Um, you do want to make sure that it's putting a, a number in the basket right here as you're adding those forms in. And then once you're done, you're going to click the Add button, and it'll add your forms to the list. OK. So the best part of the new system is that it automatically auto-populates your forms for you. Pretty nice talk. Yeah. Pretty worth learning a new system. <laughs> so it auto-populates those forms for you so you don't have to worry about auto-populating those forms. Worry about looking for that button. So uh, it's automatically going to do that step for you. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but um, I did mention that you can add a photo, but on any of the steps, um, you can change the photo here. And this is the main photo on your, uh, on your transaction. We also, uh, we also have a button up at the top. If you haven't applied a template, when you came into the system initially, um, you can apply a template later. So if you forgot to um, apply the listing, uh, your single family listing template, 
earlier, if you click on the stop white icon, uh, you can apply that template there. Or, and you only want to do this if your office doesn't already have a template, or if you've added all the forms that you're going to use for a normal single family template, onto this page, you can create a template from there. Uh, be careful with this option because it does add contacts and documents to it as well. Um, so you may have to go in and adjust that template to remove the contacts and documents later. Um, so be very careful with that option, but it is there for you. So, and that may make more sense once we go through and create a template a little bit later. And then import data that's from the MLS or from um, our real tax system. And sharing, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but if you, have a, if you have a team in your office, you can share transactions with that team. Okay. Any questions so far? Hmm? You can. Um, so the cool thing about sorting forms now is that you don't have to sort it like a Netflix queue where you have to um, change all the numbers and the numbers have to be in order. You can't have duplicate numbers and it was just kind of a mess trying to sort it. Now all you have to do is drag and drop them. Okay, so you just drag and drop them, put them in the order you want, and then you're done. You build a template, like a listing template, and then every form you ever need for a listing, you don't need some of them in that template, you delete it. You can. You have a template before you apply it to the transaction. You can delete it out of the template before you apply it to the transaction. I see stuff in there, right? I'm not listing a template. But you have to put everything in there just so you have the template that's everything. I would argue that you should make make two separate templates, one for CIC and one because um, we'll go through. Three, you can do a listing template for a rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can because and what you're going to end up doing probably, and this is going to kind of we're kind of going to get into the weeds. Sorry. Um, so there's a transaction type. So button right here. Every time with the exception of if you make the form mandatory. So if your office makes a form mandatory, which is completely possible, a broker can make a form mandatory, okay. um, then there's not going to be a delete form. That, there's not going to be a delete option under there. Um, but that's mostly going to be for an agency form or for a listing contract form. It's not going to be for a CIC form where it's, it's going to be mandatory. Difficult question. Any other questions? Okay. So our next step is to go through, and we're gonna um, we're gonna go into the form editor. So this is this is the same as it was before. Our form, form editor looks um, very similar. So if I click on the listing contract, and I just clicked on the words uh, for our listing contract, is hyperlink. And it's going to bring me into that listing contract. And it's going to load my language into here.
And it does look a little goofy on here, and it's, um, I think it's because of my projection here. My words are pushing together a little bit. Um, so just a couple things on here. I'm not going to go through and fill out the form, um, but just a couple things on here. I have a save button. There are two save options under it. So just by clicking the save button, I'm not saving the document. I need to go to save. And then either over to save to save it in the system or save as PDF to save it on my computer. So there's two, two save options under there. I do need to pick one. Um, this is the same as in Authentify when somebody is signing a document. Um, they do need to go to save and then over to save again. Um, not Authentify, but when they're filling out disclosures on the system, uh, they do need to go to the second save option under there as well. So that's the same for, for clients as well. Um, there's some watermarks under there if you need to use them. There's a print button. Um, there's a send button. This is just for one document. Um, so I have send via email, fax, doc box. This is to our document storage section of the system to authenticate. And then we have to mark up in doc box. And that's just for this document. Um, we can add clauses to the document. So your office can add clauses to the system, or you can add personal clauses to the system. We have our transaction forms button right up at the top. This is the button that you're going to probably use the most. If I click on that button, I have a bunch of different options under here for different forms that I can click on. Uh, so you can click through to any one of the forms to fill out information on it. So the first thing that you want to do is fill out this form. Once you're done filling out this form, go to File and Save, and then over to Save. And then you want to click on Transaction Form, and then you can click through to your next document. Okay? If you want to send your seller's property disclosure for them to fill out online, so if you want them to be able to type in it, you can check this box right here on just the seller's disclosure. You want to send this one separately if you want them to be able to fill it out. We, want, we don't want them to make changes to the listing contract as well. Okay? So I'm sending separately. I'm clicking the email button under here. I have the option to send it as a link and allow them to make changes. Okay? And then I'm going to put their name and their email address in here. I can send them a message. Um, if they're faxing it back, I can use these options right here, otherwise I can leave those blank. And then I'm going to check the box. Okay, so that's allowing them to make changes to the seller's property disclosure. And um, because of the changes that they made to the seller's property disclosure a couple years ago where they have check boxes in there, they can fill it all completely online. Okay? Uh -huh. If you were to put the date in there right now, the purchase of the date at the top of the purchase agreement, I think it's linked to one of the dates. The offer date, I think. Mm -hmm. If you put the offer date in on um, on a detail section, I think it's linked to that. Um, for the purchase agreement, um, it's not on any other pages on it. contract, is it? I don't know that it's on any other. It isn't. Okay. So that is the form editor. Any questions on the form editor? No, it's unlimited. Okay, I'm going to click the next button. Our next page is the documents page. Um, this is unlimited cloud storage for you, okay? So I'm going to say it again. Unlimited, I'm going to add the word free cloud storage for you, okay? So, 
Um, if you have photos for your property, you can store them here. If you have disclosures for your property, um, if somebody says you've asked the disclosures, you can store them in here. If you have accessory documents, if you have um, well, septic, well septic tests, anything you want to store in here, you can store in here. Okay? It's unlimited storage. So um, you can add those documents into here. It's fairly easy to add. Um, the only part that's kind of a pain is if you have to add one document at a time. So if I click the add, doc, add button, um, there's a couple different options here. I have upload a file from your device or computer. I have copy from Docbox. So this is something that's already in the system. I have import from a third party. So this is cloud, another cloud storage system. Um, I can email upload or I can download, for, download a contact card. Um, so this one right here is the one that I'm going to show you quick. So this is a two-step process. So I click this first. Oh, you can do up to 20 files at once now. Sweet. And then you click in the blue box. So you're going to pick which one you're using and then click in the blue box. And then you can pick the document and click open. And you can add it. So you can do up to 20 at one time. So you can do almost all of your photos at one time. Add them into here. Then you're storing them on in the system. So anywhere that you have access to, have internet access, basically you can access this, this system and have access to your photos or to your wallet or whatever you're storing in here. Or your staff. I found out too when you go ahead to Google. So when you click on that box, you can actually check five boxes at once and then it's all in all Yeah, it says it says it allows twenty now. Yeah, yeah whereas before it was just one document. So it's so rather than back and forth and then down. Yeah. Yeah. So it just my pet peeve about it just went away. So <laughs> Okay, so that is the uh, that is going through the wizard. So uh, we haven't printed or emailed any of the documents through the system, but if I go back to step four, um, the easiest way to email the forms from this part of the system is through the form editor. So if I click into this form, and then if I go back to this transaction form option, and you're basically just going to check the forms that you want to email. And then click the email button here. That's the easiest way to email those forms, multiple forms. Um, they really don't want you to print forms. They make it really, really difficult to print forms, unfortunately. Um, Did somebody just say, I like printing forms? I did, yeah. Yeah. On the back, of But you can email and then print them. Print doc, print, um, create PDF. Yeah, create multiple PDFs. Uh, yeah. So, so they really don't want you to email it. But there is a, there is a way. You're going to finish up. <laughs> so we're going to we finish up with the wizard. And... Once you finish the wizard, it's going to take you to the dashboard. And when you get to the dashboard, you're going to click on the Go to Forms option. Okay. Once you get to the Go to Forms option, there is a Select All button up at the top. It's just this circle up here. We're going to click on that. And this is like shopping on Amazon, okay? So we have all of our forms in a basket. What do we do once we have all of our, we have everything we want in our, in our shopping cart? We're going to check out. Okay? So we're checking out. And we're going to click on the printer. Okay? So we're going to click on the printer. And then we click print. 
and then we remove our pop-up blocker. See, this is why it shouldn't just take for granted that I was on the same computer that I was this morning. Because I'm not. <laughs> and then it's gonna print it, it's gonna print it to PDF. So basically the PDF option that's working next to it is gonna do essentially the same thing as it as this does. So So there we go. Okay, and I am going to go through those steps one more time just because there was a lot of them. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my I'm on my transaction dashboard and I'm going to go to my forms I'm going to check the forms that I want. In this case, I want all of them. I'm going to go to my shopping cart. And then I can click the print button right here. And click print. And it will take me right to my printer. So that's how you are going to print all of your forms. And as you saw there, um, let me go back one step here. Right here, um, you can drag and drop the form all the way up until this point into a different order. So anytime you see these four flash marks here, I can always switch the order there. Any questions on a transaction so far? Yeah, how did you email it? Is that one before that? This one? Sure. Um, so, before this one? Yeah, um, before you can email. So, if I click into the form, I can do it from here too. So, if I click into the form, I can go into the transaction form button up here. And then you're going to check the forms right here. And then the email button's right up at the top. Yep. And um, the step that I was just in, you can actually email from that step as well. So you're going to add them to your basket and then you can email from that step as well. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through a couple of the additional options that are here. So checklists. Okay, checklists are something we didn't have in light. They, I think, were in Pro. Uh, we had tasks in Pro, um, but checklists were something that I think you could associate with with tasks. So um, checklists are options that they have added to the system for certain types of transactions. So you can add a new checklist. Um, to a type of transaction. So I can add a checklist item or I can add a full checklist. They have a couple added into the system. So these are full checklists um, that they've added into the system for us as a default. Um, and then you can also add your own checklist into the system. And these are just different steps that you can go through based on the type um, or point in a transaction that you're at. So um, these are the different ones that they have in here for us. So we have a residential single family listing accepted contract. So if I check that box and then click apply and say yes, it's going to add all of these items onto here for me. And these checklists are going to be based on some of the dates that I've added to the transaction. So it's going to, uh, you're going to notice that um, some of these dates are going to be three days after acceptance date here, five days after closing date. So it'll add, <coughs> excuse me, certain inform um, 
It'll add certain deadlines for me based on certain dates that I've added into this particular transaction. Um, so feel free to use these. You can you can always edit them. You can add add them uh, add new ones in for your company. But it will actually um, put this little timeline thing on here for your company. And as you're completing tasks, you can just click on um, the hourglass and you can mark it as complete. And it will give you the little checkered flag icon. Um, they'll also show up under tasks, which is also on your transaction wizard. And when you've completed the task, you're also going to click on the hourglass. And it will mark it as complete. Okay? So those are tasks. Sightings, I'm going to go through separately. Um, I'll take you through a signing separately. Um, history, we talked about a little bit, so I'm going to give you the whole history of what you've done in the transaction as far as. Um, as far as different steps that you've taken in a transaction, um, what forms you've put into here, what you've emailed, what documents you put in, um, if your client has clicked into a signing, if they've um, clicked into fill out disclosures, etc. So all of that will be in there. And then um, service orders, I touched on a little bit. I'm going to click on this for a second. Um, that's just any any appraisals, any um, inspections, anything like that that you want to add to the system, you can add service orders in there and you can also add service order contacts into the system as well um, so that you can keep track of that. And then this is just a basic call log in here as well for the transaction um, where you can just add, add calls. So you have the caller, subject, and then you have 20,000 characters in here for your call out. I hope you don't need 20,000 characters. <laughs> <laughs> that is my hope for you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go through a signing and then I have a couple um, I have a couple customer end stuff that I want to show you as far as the new system because that stuff looks a little bit different as well. Um, And please, please, please eat more cookies. There's so many cookies left. And I can't eat them. Yeah. What? So you can eat them. <laughs> I was just kidding. That's all right. It really does hurt my feelings when you make fun of me. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> just kidding. That's why I took there is nothing I have not heard as far as being short, trust me. But I am taller than Simone Biles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By little. Oh, I just a little. By just a little. She's she's four eight actually. I stood up really tall at the doctor last time and I was five foot. And by tall, I was kind of on my tippy toes a little. She didn't notice. <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump into a signing. So I just clicked over on, again, on the transaction menu. I just clicked over to signing. And I don't have any signings for this particular transaction. Um, even when I'm doing my first signing on the transaction, I do have to click the add button. So I'm just going to click the Add button. Once I click Add button and start my signing, it looks very, very similar to the old system. So it's not a lot of new stuff to learn. You can. Good question. Yes. So you can access them through transactions, and you can also access them through clicking on this pen, 
right here on the menu on the left hand side and that's going to take you outside of the transaction. Um, I always recommend that people associate them with the transaction just because then it loads it into the document section and you don't have to hunt around through documents or try to figure out a way to email those documents. Um, so it just makes it a lot easier if you associate it with the transaction, but you can you can to into the, the system a couple different ways. All right, so again, this looks very, very similar to uh, to the old system. Actually, it looks exactly the same, but I'm going to walk you through it. Uh, so we have step one, detail. Um, we have signing name right here. Again, if you think you're going to have a couple signings for this signing name, um, if you number them or put the uh, just a little description of what forms are in there, that's always a good idea just so you can keep track of what is what. And then um, participant order, this is a change from the old system. It's going to default to sign and sign now instead of sign in line. So um, this ends up, sign and sign ends up being a little bit faster. But if somebody shares an email address with another person, then it's signing sometimes it can get a little confusing. So if you want to switch that over, feel free to do so. I'm going to keep it with sign will sign here. Advanced options that we have, um, we have expiration date, start assigning, uh, set assigning expiration date. So if you have any contract dates that are in there, um, contract dates that are sensitive that are in there, you can set an expiration date. Um, and then we can also set reminders in there. And then the authentic assign ID position, um, it's going to default to the top left position. Um, I always switch ours over to the top right because our Guar logo is so big that it takes over um, the top left hand corner. So uh, I put the ID in the top right hand corner so that there's enough room for that to display on there. Ah. I apologize. For some reason, I got a cold in the summer and it doesn't usually happen to me. All right, so our second step, I just clicked the plus sign next to step two, is to add a participant. Um, you're always going to look for the step that says transaction in front of it. So it's going to give transaction and then the name of the tra transaction you're associated with. So I'm going to use that one first. And I'm going to... I'm going to add myself as a reviewer and then my two sellers as signers. And I'm doing simul sign so I don't have to pick the order, but if you're doing sign in line, you do have to pick the order for the signers on here. If you need to add anyone else, you can add new participants by clicking this button right up here. Uh, again, you can add some contacts and you can add yourself down here. And then we're going to click the plus sign next to step three. And the top option is your transaction option. So this is forms and documents from this transaction. Um, if you're doing a purchase agreement and you want to add the disclosures, you can add those to the documents section of that transaction. Um, so you can just upload those from the MLS and put them into the document section of your, your transaction and then grab them from, from that. So feel free to do that. Um, we have select for forms, that's going to grab it from forms within the system. We can select from transactions and doc box documents, that's from other transactions in the system. We can grab from a cloud storage system, upload a file, upload by email, um, excuse me, upload by fax, upload by email. Oh. This one explained to me on Monday, I always thought this was silly, but Basically what you can do is it's going to give you an email address and you can forward 
an email address to receive to this email address and it'll put it into your transaction. It'll put those documents into the transaction. And it'll also put the email thread into the transaction. So if you have an email thread um, that you want to save because it has important information in it, you can actually forward it into the internet system for storage. So that was explained to me before and it's it was kind of an aha moment that makes sense. So before it didn't quite make sense to me why you would want to upload by email. But and then the printer driver sent the office and you use the printer driver if you have questions about that you can um, contact me and I can walk you through how to use that unless you have Mac. They don't work on Mac. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to pick the first option. And just for the interest of time, I'm just going to select two forms out of here and click Add. Any questions so far? Okay, so this is a question that started asking a while ago. Um, sometimes it gets confused about who is the first seller, second seller, and who the list agent is. Oh, they're not signing, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so seller one, seller two, and then list agent isn't signing, so it's going to ignore that one. So I'm going to save that. Ah. And then if you have received a purchase agreement and it was scanned through to you, um, and you maybe need to rotate it or something like that, if you click on the eye, the little eye in the circle, um, you can rotate the pages if you need to. You can rename the document. Um, you can remove system layout if there's a system layout that's incorrect on there. And then there's an option on the bottom as well that I can't see, that I don't remember what it is. But... Let me try. Delete pages. There we go. I was joking with somebody the other day that re receiving an update on purchase agreement is kind of a rite of passage in real estate at first. So they were saying they hadn't received one upside down yet. Is that true? Well, sideways. Sideways? Okay. I'll go with sideways, yeah. So we can change the order here if you want these in a different order. We can click these little arrows, and that's going to be the same for participants if you're doing sign in line. And then our next step is to just click on step four, and it's going to take just a little while because it's going to prepare the document. So if there's any signature blanks that it needs to add to the document, if there's any layouts on here, it will add them. One particular document that you do want to pay attention to um, is the agency form. When you're looking through, you want to make sure that there are enough signing blanks on there. Um, because both the buyers and the sellers signed that one, m and AR had trouble bringing over the layout for that one. So you really want to make sure that it has all the signing blanks over for that one. And that they're located in the correct spot. Okay. With these yellow boxes, you do want to make sure that they're not overlapping because the signatures will overlap. So it's okay if the blue text overlaps, but you don't want the yellow boxes to overlap. So if they are overlapping, you want to make sure that you move them over just a little bit. And as far as drag and drop, we have the options for the signers right here. You want to select the correct signer out of the list. So if you want to switch it over, we can do that. 
And then you're going to select the appropriate drag and drop. So we have required signature, optional signature, initial, initial, optional. Um, we have an X. We have an optional X. These are called radio buttons. So they're X's. Um, you know, put a dot in there. What are the other options? Circle, check mark. We can add up to six of them at a time. I'm not sure if we have anything that requires that in our form. Um, this will add the date. We have signer's name if you forgot that in a spot. Um, we can initial multiple pages. You can add a text box for the signer to add text. Uh, with the text box, do try to remember when you're adding the text box to make it a solid background of the text box. If you don't make it a solid background in the text box, it's it's kind of like ghostwriting. Anybody remember ghostwriting? Okay. Okay. Um, so basically it appears like on the form. So they have their form. They have the form. And they have their text box where they're supposed to sign right here. But nothing appears on here, so they're not really sure where they're supposed to go. They don't bring the cursor down here, but if they miss the cursor, they're not really sure that they're supposed to put the, the text here. So if you make it a solid text box, then they can at least see that they're supposed to put text in there and then they can stop. It, it helps them to, to see where where that text needs to go. So, and then also they can hover over it and they'll give them the tools as well. So it just makes it a little bit easier for them. Um, that's probably the number one thing when people are finished signing, but it won't let them complete the signing. That's something that they may be missing, but it won't let them complete. They're coming back to the same spot and they can't figure out why one and the last spot. And if you make it a solid tax box, then they can see that they need to add some text there. And then also, Cider is required to fill out this field, and not required to fill out this field is the default on this one um, instead of being required. Layouts you really don't need to worry about. Um, you can add a layout to a form, um, especially if it's your company form. You can and save a layout in the system. There are some videos on that if you want to watch them. Um, and then a couple different options on here that I do want to point out. Um, there is an undo and a clear button. Anybody that's seen in my class before, what does that undo button do? Anybody? The undo button undoes everything that you've done. Yeah. Just the last one. Not just the last one. But everything. Everything. Yeah. Don't use the undo button. Okay, the clear the clear button's even worse. <laughs> yeah, so the clear button gets rid of everything, including the layouts that we're on for. So the clear button's even worse. So uh, stay away from that undo button, stay away from the clear button. They're not they're not good things to use in the system. Uh, the easiest way to get rid of something in the, in the system is to right click on it. Or if you're on a Mac or a tablet, if you um, just lightly click on it and then click on the trash can icon that comes onto here, it'll delete it and then you can re-add it. If you want to see the options under here, there's a gear icon that'll come up if you click on it. And then you just have to click on delete. Okay. If you get a phone call, um, the new system still times out after about 20 minutes, I believe. Um, so do click on the options and click state changes or click back and then come back to this step um, because otherwise you may lose some of your changes. Any questions on this page?
All right. Any markups that you do, markups are under here. Any markups that you do, do print now. Um, I swear when we first got them, they didn't print, but they do print now. Um, so any markups you do on the form, they do print off on the form, so you can be aware that they will be on the final copy of the form. And our next step, if we click the next button, is to customize an email invitation. So we have three different emails that we can send. So we have a custom email that we can send to each person. Um, here's some shortcuts that you can use. And you can use these in any program. Um, if you use control, control C to copy, the text, so you write it once and then control C to copy and control C to paste. And then it's command of a, on a Mac. So if you want to copy and paste um, whatever you want from one color to this other color, you just have to control C and control C to paste. And that will put it into the box. You have a button to paste it into the next contact. But that has been thrown away. Any questions on the email button? Um, by the way, the subject line, if you don't put a custom subject in there, it will automatically um, put a default subject in there, so you don't have to worry about that. That is completely optional. And it does have their first name and last name in the subject line. So if they share an email with someone, um, you don't have to worry about them being confused about that, hopefully. Just having them look for their name. OK. I'm going to just save that. I'm going to send the invitation. And I'm going to actually switch over. I just switched over to the, um, this is my email, so I'm acting as a client right now, and I received this first email I received disclosures from my agent to fill out on my property, so this is just how they um, see those disclosures. My eleven million dollar property that I own for and all. I know you guys didn't know I own that, right? Okay, so I can just go in and fill this out. Just don't ask me how to get there because I'm really not sure. <laughs> so I can fill this out online. Again, they can fill out all the fields. Um, the location map. They'll still have to fill out separately. But once they are done, they are going to go to File and Save. And then again, like I said, they have to go over to Save. So file, save, save, and then file and exit. And then you as an agent at that point, once they exit, you're going to get an email. Okay? And then you can go into the system and you can check it out and look and see what they filled out. So then I also received an email to... Sign some documents. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So it's going to tell them how many signing blocks they have. So if you talk to them on the phone before that, have them try to pay attention to that number. 
So it has seven signing blocks, so have them kind of watch out for that number of signing blocks. That will help. Okay, so this this first screen is where they pick the language and then they're going to pick their, they can draw their signature or they can select the font. I just usually leave the default. And then they're going to accept the terms and conditions. Um, number one step that people forget is to click the start button. Okay? Start button's in the upper right hand corner. They're going to click start. And it's going to take them to the first signing blank. Um, sometimes, for whatever reason, it's going to put the first signing blank below the page. Um, if that happens, they'll just have to scroll down a little bit. And with these optional ones, they either have to accept or decline. If they cancel, it's going to take them back. So this is three, four, five. Well, that would be weird. Oh. So they shouldn't look for the seven. Yeah. Okay. So never mind my suggestion to look for seven. And then once they're finished, um, they're going to get a certificate. That ID right there is their um, signing identification number that makes it valid. And they can click there to access the signing um, and create a password for the system if they'd like. OK, so that was a signing. And the dashboard for that looks exactly the same as it did before. Um, oh, this is the customer dashboard, sorry. Let me go back for a second. By the way, if you sign as, a, as an agent, if you sign, throw us on to sign, and then you go back into the system, I would advise closing out of it and sign after you're done signing, and then logging back into up on the sign. It most likely will log you out, but if it doesn't, sometimes it has a little glitchy thing that goes with it, um, then it'll take you off anyway. So go ahead and just, as soon as you're done signing, log back out, and then come back into the system. Okay. I'm going to go back into my up on sign. And this dashboard looks almost exactly the same as it did previously. So these are my signings in progress. This is the one where my client just signed. And right here, because I did sign on sign, this last person authenticated, and then they signed right here. So it's just waiting for those two additional ones there. Any questions on authenticity before you move on to the template? Yes. When are you troubled with uh, banks accepting no sentence on you? Oh. Yeah. It's going to be Well, well yeah, the banks are not accepting no sentence on you. I sent the whole package of documentation in. Um, we're having trouble with uh, the when they do a loan authorization for payoff, and we're having trouble with the trustee from the bank. Is there any any recommendations as far as what we need to be doing to try it? My thanks to the Peoria that I did with the agent. Okay. Those are outside the state. No, no, for the most part, it's the big bank, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, Chase. Um, Bank of America. So no, not these little banks. But we just got one. We just got a Minnesota is rejecting one. Um, for contact information, you want to enter real quick. Yeah. Okay. And she's also she's also on the legal hotline now, so I can 
Um, it does appear that they have taken the words away from all of these options up here now. Um, but if you if you hover over them, it gives you the different options. Um, this resend option, I get this question a lot. If I click resend, does it start it over? It does not start it over if you click the resend option. Um, two reasons why you would click resend. Um, first reason would be if you have a typo in the email address and you corrected it, um, correct that typo, click the resend button. Whoever has not signed yet will get it again. Um, second option, if you call someone and they haven't received it, they check their spare, check their junk mail, um, they when you talk to them, say both the word spam and junk mail, by the way, because a lot of people have each one or the other. Um, have them look in both if they haven't, if they don't have it in both, uh, then that's when you would resend it. And uh, if they still don't get it after that, contact internet and they can look in to make sure it's not out of, on their end. Um, and as long as it's gone out on their end, they may have to contact their email provider and see why they're not getting it. A lot of times somebody will have a second email that you can send it to as well. But this reset button right here, um, if you got if you have a typo in a form or something like that, that's when you would use reset. That will reset the transaction. So anybody that says has signed, um, it's going to then not become valid, so it'll basically reset it to the beginning and you can go in, correct your form, and then reset it um, and reset the signing. Okay, so we're going to go over to one last thing and then I think you guys are going to get out a little bit early here. <clears throat> so I just clicked on the little gear icon down at the bottom. So this one right here, everybody has this option. Um, and under this option, uh, you are going to have the preferences button right here. Um, under preferences, you are going to have an email signature. So you can add that to the system. So if you want your email signature to be um, in there whenever you send an email out of the system, you can add that. Um, if you change your phone number, email address, if you change offices, make sure you go in and change your email signature as well because that doesn't automatically change in a system. So that's under preferences. Um, program settings, that's going to be your font size in the system. If you want to increase your font size in the system, tiny. Um, if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can do that under program, program settings. Um, notifications. Uh, how many of you have heard of super user notifications? <laughs> so if you're a staff person and you have not heard of super user notifications, count yourself as a lucky person. Um, so super user no notifications are notifications that staff sometimes get um, for when people log into the system or when people delete transactions, etc. So um, those are going to be under notification settings. Yeah, it's clicking. Okay. <laughs> um, clauses. You can create clauses in the system. You can have personal clauses or office clauses. Those can be created under here. So if you have um, a listing contract and you want to add some language to it, you can add it through here. Um, you can also add forms language to the system. Um, for your office, there is a fee, um, but if you do want to do that for your office, um, that can be done by sending an email to forms at instantnetsolutions.com. And 
And then it says there is a fee, it is a per page fee. And there is a copyright under Minnesota form, so just be aware of that. You will have to, uh, you'll get some information about that if you try to make changes to those forms. Um, type management, this is kind of what I was talking about before, um, where we have different types in the system. <coughs> we have different property types. Um, so Chris, like you were talking about, you would have to have different property types to the system to associate with your transaction type. <coughs> So, or excuse me, you'd have to have different transaction types to associate with different, um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Come back to me after class. Yes. And then we have different statuses in here that you can add. So those can be added. Um, I would recommend adding those types on an office basis. So. If you are an agent, I wouldn't go in there and add a ton of types in the system for yourself because it's going to be super, super confusing for yourself because your office may do the same. Um, so I would just do that on a per office basis. Um, default dashboards right here, you can change the dashboard. Um, this, I would just go in and change your dashboard. I want to change the defaults for the dashboard, just go ahead and Kind of play around with your dashboard and make changes to that. Don't worry about that default. Checklist manager right here, that's what I was talking about. You can um, make changes to that checklist, create your own checklist in the system. Um, transaction templates we're going to come back to in a second here. Sharing. If you work on a team on a regular basis, you can create sharing groups for that team in the system. So um, you can go into the system and create groups on a team. So you may need the help of an admin or your broker to create those sharing groups in the system. And then um, you can connect those sharing groups to your transactions. If you need help with that, you can give me a call. Excuse me, here at the association, but you can create those in the system. Um, third party settings, you need to link um, a vendor to the system. Service providers, we talked about this a little bit. Um, but this is for um, appraisers, for inspectors that you need to add to the system. Data migration, if you have transaction templates that you have updated in the old system, but you haven't updated them in the new system, you have one chance, one chance to do a data migration. So if you've updated them in the old system, you can do that data migration one time and it'll bring that information over to the new system. So um, basically what it's going to do, it's going to have you click on a button and you can um, run that migration and bring that information to the new system. Um, return to the previous transaction desk, you can do that through this button as well. Okay, so we're going to go back up to transaction templates and I'm going to show you that really quickly. And then I'll open it up for questions before we take off. Okay, so I have a couple of transaction templates that I've created in the system. So transaction templates have gotten a little bit bigger in the system than they were previously. Previously we could only add um, contacts and documents and contacts, documents, and forms to this. So. All right, so I just click the Add button up in the upper right-hand corner, and then I have the option for ownership of personal or office. If you are not a admin or a broker, you will only have the option for personal under here. And like I said, check with your admins or your broker before you create these, because if they're creating them for you, you don't want to have duplicate forms in the system, so you don't want to create your own. Go to pick office. Lack contact from other super users. Okay, so this is another thing that you have to look at. So you're the admin, you're creating a template, and if I check this box, and Chris wants to go edit my template, he can't. Okay? I can only edit it. Okay? 
So you have to decide in your office if you want all of the admins in your office and your broker to be able to edit it, or if you just want that one person to be able to edit that. Okay? Someone leaves the office. That's a very good question. <laughs> okay. We have to call it. They can, they, they can unlock. They can unlock things, but yeah. Probably the thing, there wasn't this option before. It basically just locked it and they would do it for you, but you would have to create a new So I'm guessing it's just like that. First has their own separate login credentials. Mm -hmm. So if somebody used the super user credentials, they could go in. Well, so if I can unlocked, then you could go into your account and just do it. And I logging in with myself can make changes to it. So nobody's logging in at each other. But we're all making changes using right. templates. Right. Yeah. This is recorded. No, seriously, this is recorded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the multifamily template. So we already have the other ones. And we're going to attach that to type residential listing. So, what you want to do before you go in here is if you don't have the type, the transaction type that you need, you want to create that type first. So that's your first step is to create the type, and then you want to go in and create the template. Okay? You don't want to attach <coughs> multiple templates to one type. That being said, I'm going to say commercial. So I'm going to say commercial listing template instead. And then I would save successfully. Okay, so we have lots of information that we can add to this, but we have to remember that this information has to be globally applicable. So my details that I add into here have to be globally applicable to the transactions that my office is creating. Because I don't want to cause them to spend more time taking stuff out of this template than they would spend putting stuff into the template. Okay? And there are already some things that are going to roll into the system in certain, certain information. So details right here. I've already filled out. So I don't have to worry about adding anything in here. Checklist. I can add a checklist to here automatically. So the checklist would automatically come into this system. Now you probably want to have a discussion with your office if you want to use checklists in that system. Maybe you have another system that does checklists or um, you have a calendar that or they have calendars you can use to manage those different different activities. So you have to decide if you want to use that in the system or not. Um, contacts is our next thing. With contacts, you have to remember that the listing agent for selling agent is already added. The listing office for selling office is already added. So you don't have to worry about those two items. So you don't have to add those to contacts because those will already be in there. Uh, Documents and folders. Under documents and folders, if you have a listing checklist that is just a checkout sheet, you can add that to the system. If you have um, any other documents that you want to add for the office, you can add. Um, I can't even think of anything right now, but if you have personal anything, property. personal property that, that you want to add, you can add those into the system. That's actually a form now, unless you changed it. A lot of offices changed that. But, yeah. So keep that in mind. You can add those to the system as well. 
Okay. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to be adding is under forms. We are going to go in, and I picked commercial, so I'm going to go into Minnesota commercial forms. And I'm just going to pick my share one type showing center. I'm going to pick my forms, then I'm going to click add. And then I have my forms in here. And there is not a save button on the screen. So once I've added these two here, I can just pop into my next screen and I'm done. There's not an add button that I have to click or anything like that. Okay? Super easy. If you want to go to your next step to add your next template, again, you want to add your type first. So type management, transaction, and then click the plus sign to add that first. So type management first. And then transaction templates are going to be your second step. Okay? And if you're adding for type management and you're adding for your office, make sure you make the type available for your full office. Okay? Because there's nothing more frustrating <laughs> than adding a template for your office that's not available because they can't access that type. All right, well, that's all I have. Any questions? <laughs> yeah? Uh, I'm going to really switch the answer because you have to go through that. So, anybody that has Apple Core Permit is a super user. But most people um, become super users when they first come to the office. And are so bombarded by internet emails that they ask for them to stop. So I send them instructions on how to get them off. So I keep the new instructions on how to get them back on. The only problem is that you don't have to bring it. So we just turn it on again. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Will you have a link?